So uh, you might have guessed, I'm, I'm Paul Luce, and myself and half of our division is here today to give you this talk. Um, in fact, Brooke even sent us an email a couple days ago and just assumed this was a panel discussion. <laughs> he said, no, it's actually four of us that are going to go through this. Um, so we're going to talk about a NVM over Fabrics target via SPDK um, and vHost implementation. I'm going to give you the intro on SPDK, and I'm going to kind of assume that a lot of people have at least heard of it. Anybody heard of SPDK? Yeah, it's been pretty popular here. I think there were some talks last year, maybe the year before. Um, I was out here last year doing an NVML talk, um, and out here a few years before that doing Swift erasure coding, and then dialing way back to the first days of the OFA, um, OFA Windows NVMe Express driver. Um, came out here and did a talk on that as myself and another small team of engineers put that together. But SPDK, oh, this thing isn't moving. Okay, so I'm just going to do like three quick slides since uh, there was a huge show of hands, right? What it is, why it is, and how it is is kind of the way this is going to flow. So what it is, basically a bunch of software building blocks, right? It's all software building blocks. And we'll see real quickly on the architecture slide, uh, if you haven't used it before, um, there are a bunch of different libraries, a bunch of different tools. You can mix and match them to do whatever makes sense for your environment um, with the focused all-around performance. Um, it's all open source all BSD licensed. I've got a slide talking about how our community has grown. Uh, really over the last six months, a lot of strides in building the community up and really building up, taking advantage of the, of the software underneath and trying to get more people um, involved. And of course the theme is all user space and pulled mode stuff to really get the most efficiency out of drivers, um, most efficiency out of hardware without using the kernel. All right, so there's everything that SBDK is. Um, we could easily spend a whole talk just going over this, um, but I want to give time for my, my colleagues to get into the meat of what we're about here this afternoon. Um, I will point out just to, um, for my own shameless plug here, um, Blob Store here, I've got a talk coming on Wednesday at 1.30 if you want to hear more about that, um, deep dive into that. But it, essentially, SPDK is kind of layered into three sections, right? We've got our protocol components, we've got our services layer where we add value and people can add value um, with, with different system services you can add um, using our block device abstraction layer, uh, add a compression or encryption or kind of anything you want to do in sort of a filter pattern um, as you get through the stack. And then we've got our pulled mode device drivers at the bottom. Various different points of integration that have been done um, really all over the last year. Um, I'll talk a little bit about um, the RocksDB one on Wednesday. Um, Zia's got to talk on the Ceph one Tuesday. Is that right? Thursday? I don't know. Sometime this week. <laughs> um, and, then, and then we've got some pretty cool application framework stuff that is sort of a helper for putting all this stuff together. I'll talk a little bit about that Wednesday um, when we go through a blob store example. But that's kind of what it is, this collection of stuff. Okay, and then why? Um, everybody raise their hands. You all know what SPDK is for. Um, it's for performance, right? It's for getting the most out of the hardware that you're using. Uh, it's for really helping to deal with the issue that unless you've been living under a rock since NVMe came out and started shining a spotlight on the software overhead, right? That's what this is all for. It's all to remove the software overhead, really expose um, the benefit of next generation media and today's and next generation CPUs. So you can see some of the, the high level benchmarks. Uh, we'll talk more about that today and also on Wednesday. Um, but, you know, 10x more IOPS uh, with NVMe over, over Fabrics, uh, 8x more IOPS per core with NVMe Express. And the per core is a really important piece, and you'll see that in the, in the numbers. Really, it's really about maximizing the use of a core to get real work out of it instead of having it do a lot of busy work. Um, lots of better tail latency um, with RocksDB workloads. Um, got some good numbers on that we'll show you on Wednesday. Um, and then overall, more efficient use of development resources. You might say, what does that mean? What does that mean? <laughs> It means right, we are really building this community. So this started out as really as a science project in the lab in Arizona um, five years ago or something, uh, and, and grew slowly and got more sort of official inside of Intel. Um, eventually, it became clear that it made sense to open source this. Um, a lot of this was common core components that you would use in building an optimized storage application to use CPU and, and, and next generation drives as efficiently as you can. Um, so it was open sourced, but it was still not really that accessible, not usable by a community. It was just kind of like dumped into GitHub and 
one day master would just change on you because somebody had a huge pull request that got accepted. So what we've been focusing on this year and have made some huge strides is, is really getting a community in place and turning this into um, not an Intel project that's being shared with everybody, but an SPDK project that everybody contributes to. So we've got an IRC channel, we've got a distribution mailing list. Um, all of the uh, reviews are through Garrett Hub now. So every single review that's pending, every patch that's pushed, all of the reviews are visible and everybody is invited to contribute. So we've got a maintainer model. Um, we've got, uh, it's, it's on the next slide. We've got Trello, which is what we're using for our backlog. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, the only other thing I want to mention on this slide was Trello. So in addition to having our reviews in the open and the code in the open, all of our discussions and designs in the open, Trello is where we keep our backlog. So anybody that has an idea or any large project that we have work, that work, that's work in progress now will show up on Trello. And anybody can go up and look at the design documents, contribute to the design discussion, or find meaningful work to do. So we've got it categorized in like low-hanging fruit and big things that you can do. So you can go up there and find, you know, is there a small patch I can do to get involved and, and help learn how this code works, make a contribution. You can go out there and find meaningful work really easily. So that's all up there. Okay, and I want to take the one quick question on this slide. No, next one. This one. Yeah. Um, this is, the key word here is some RocksDB workloads. <laughs> so um, so I'll, I'm going to defer your question. Maybe we can talk about it afterwards, or we can talk about it on Wednesday, because we've got um, the performance engineer that took these measurements on Wednesday. I'm giving the first 80% of the talk on Blobstore itself. Um, the last 20% he'll be covering RocksDB workloads on top of Blobstore. So you'll get all the nitty-gritty info. Okay, and then one last word about the community. We, uh, we had a summit in April. Um, I think it was right here in this hotel. I'm pretty sure it was. Um, and it was, it was a sort of come all, come one, come all. Um, there were 200 people or so here. Uh, and it was really presentation style. It was very much like this. We've got a meetup in, in Phoenix. It's actually full now, um, November 6th through 8th. Um, we were planning on maybe 15 developers from all different companies around the world. We're up to 22 now. Um, it's kind of like, oh my gosh, we got to get a bigger boat. So we had to get a bigger room. Um, but we're, we have 22 developers coming to Chandler um, and all we're going to do for three days is, is do design discussions and write code. And the one rule is there's no PowerPoint allowed. So if anybody is interested, even though we're full, I might be able to squeeze in a few more. Uh, if you're familiar with SPDK and you come with your development environment and you're ready to contribute um, to good, meaningful design discussions, we'd love to have you. We can easily make some room for another one or two maybe. Okay, so that's the, that's the high level what is SPDK while we're doing it? Um, now I'm going to turn it over to Zia. Are you coming up next? And he'll start getting into the meat of this talk. So. Uh, my, my name is Ziyang, so let, let me introduce the uh, MVN Nova Fabrics target and the vhost part. Uh, actually, for the, let me see the next page. For the MVN Nova Fabrics component, we released our first version in uh, 2016. And we also have uh, uh, some updates uh, in 17.03 with some performance uh, improvement. And also in next release, uh, 17.10, we will uh, continue the scale scalability and the performance uh, improvement for uh, thousands uh, uh, connections. And uh, we also have the SBK's own MNE over fabrics cost or initiator. It is first released uh, in last year. And we also have some uh, performance enhancement in SGL part to remove the uh, data copy. So, so the performance uh, uh, of both MF over target and the host is, is both good. And uh, in this page, uh, it shows the, uh, the throughput, uh, throughput comparison between SPK MME over fabric target and the kernel MME over fabric target. Uh, let, let's see the uh, uh, diagram in the left. 
we, we can see that uh, uh, in this diagram, uh, both SBDK and the kernel uh, can achieve the, the network uh, bandwidth. Uh, the, there are three uh, uh, Marox cards with uh, 150 gigabit uh, BPS line rate. And the, both kernel and the SBK MF target can achieve that. Uh, but uh, for the uh, core utilization, we can see that SDK only uses three cores, but kernel uses uh, 30. So the uh, core performance for IOPS for SDK is about uh, uh, 10x better. And uh, the performance gaming, uh, there are three reasons. The first is that we have uh, our own SDK user space MNE driver, and it is already open sourced and used by many uh, customers, companies. And uh, the second is that we use the RDMA QPR uh, polling. There will be no interrupt. And uh, the third one is also important. Uh, for the connections uh, from the client, our ping to the uh, dedicated CPU course. It means that there will be no uh, migrations for the connections and uh, no resource contentions for each connection. So the, the, this is all the performance uh, gaming. And the, uh, this diagram uh, shows, uh, shows the experiment that we uh, use two machines. They are connecting uh, directly, and we will uh, test the round chip time uh, from the uh, initiator uh, from the initiator to the target. It, uh, the round chip time mean, means that the initiator sends the I/O, and uh, the ending time will, will be the initiator re receives the uh, request. And uh, there are. Uh, two types of uh, comparison. Uh, it will be uh, read and write, uh, read and write. So uh, let's uh, focus on the uh, left part with the, uh, the left two. Uh, it is uh, compare the kernel target with the kernel MF initiator and uh, the SPK MF target with the SPK initiator. Uh, we can see the uh, total uh, round chip time uh, for the kernel case, is about uh, 25 uh, microsecond. Uh, but the, for the SDK, uh, we only have uh, 14 for the read. It means that the, the latency uh, for the read and read uh, is reduced uh, by 44 percentage. And uh, there are same case uh, for the write. It, it reduces the latency uh, by uh, 36 uh, percentage. And uh, this diagram uh, shows the detailed uh, analysis. Uh, if we use the SPK target with the kernel MF initiator, we divide the uh, total round chip time into three parts. The first is the uh, fabric, uh, fabric arrive time. The second is the, the device time. It means the I/O processing in the target site, and the last is the fabric uh, departure time. Uh, we can see that uh, uh, from the uh, device time, it, it means that the I/O executed in the SDK MF target it started at uh, 6.05 microsecond, and the last is the uh, 13, uh, 13 uh, uh, dot 05 uh, microsecond. It is about uh, uh, seven microseconds. So the time is uh, very, uh, very small. And uh, if we uh, uh, replace the kernel MF initiator with the SDK MF initiator, uh, we can see that the the time of the fabric arrive times, it means that the MF initiator uh, sends us a request uh, and uh, 
after that the server received that, we can see that uh, the previous case, the time is about six microseconds. Uh, if we uh, replace with the MF initiator, SDK MF initiator, it will be reduced uh, into two microseconds. And also there are some uh, uh, latency reduction for the uh, fabric departure uh, time. So from the two diagram, uh, it, in, it decreases the latency uh, from uh, 20 microseconds uh, to 14 microseconds. And uh, this is my uh, first part uh, for the MF, uh, MNE over Fabrics target and the initiator. And uh, the next part uh, is the accelerator vhost target. And uh, before, uh, before we introduce uh, SDK vhost target, uh, there will be some uh, simple introduction uh, for Vert.io. Uh, actually, Vert.io is a pair virtualized driver uh, specification. Uh, in the guest VM, there will be the virtual front-end drivers. And uh, uh, in the hyper hypervisor side, there will be uh, virtual back-end uh, drivers. And uh, the hypervisor can use either device emulation or a pass-through or others uh, to emulate the uh, functions of the virtual back-end drivers. And uh, there are many uh, type of uh, Vertio drivers, uh, for example, Vertio Net, Vertio SCSI, uh, Vertio Block, and uh, for SPDK we only focus on uh, Vertio Block and uh, Vertio SCSI performance improvement. And uh, the relationship between the between the uh, we host and and the existing Vertio is that. Uh, the vhost solution, uh, it pulls out the virtual backend drivers uh, from the hypervisor uh, to the uh, vhost target. And uh, the vhost target uh, can be implemented in uh, two, ty uh, two types. The first one is the vhost kernel, and the second is the vhost user space. And in SBK, we implement uh, it in user space. And uh, uh, for the benefit of vhost is that the vhost protocol uh, separates the uh, I/O processing. Uh, uh, for the v for the in the protocol, the, the guest VM will uh, negotiate with the vhost target uh, for the following three uh, three information. For the, for example, the memory the number of the virtual queues, and the location of the uh, virtual queues. Yeah. Yeah. Is, is there a demo tomorrow with vhost? Yeah, actually, uh, we, we, we have some uh, s slides show, show that there will be some booths. Right, tomorrow morning at yeah. like 7.30, right? Yeah. And, uh, uh, and uh, uh, in this page, uh, it shows the detailed imp implementation of, of SDK vhost target. Uh, currently, SDK uh, support uh, both acceleration for virtual SCSI and virtual block in, in guest, and all the codes are open sourced. The, the QMU will set up the uh, set up a vhost target uh, through Unix domain. Uh, Unix, uh, Unix domain socket memory, and uh, the guest VM submits the uh, I/O to the vhost target uh, through the virtual queues. And uh, during that, there will be no queue mill, uh, uh, inter intercept. Also, uh, during the I/O ex uh, I/O execution, uh, there will uh, there will be no uh, there will no there will be no VM exit. And uh, for the completion inter interrupt, it is implemented by the event ID. And uh, definitely, uh, uh, for the QMU, we need to have some uh, changes. For example, the QMU need to uh, allocate some uh, huge pages for the guest VM. 
but definitely for the guest OS, uh, it will be uh, no change. So it will be transparent to all the applications uh, inside the uh, guest OS. And uh, uh, this page uh, shows the, uh, the comparison SDK v host with the existing uh, solutions. Uh, we, we compare the, the virtual SCSI target, uh, VO host kernel target, and uh, the SDK v host user space uh, target. The, the difference uh, is about the, the protocols. You can see uh, for the first one, it just uh, use the uh, virtual SCSI PCI in QMU. But uh, the second, uh, we use the uh, vhost SCSI PCI. And uh, for SBK, we use the uh, vhost uh, user SCSI PCI. And also in the, in the target side, they are, they are also be different. For the kernel vhost target, it, it will route the vhost to the uh, Linux uh, IO target with the kernel IMA drivers. But for SBK, uh, we just uh, use our SBK user space I mean drivers. And this page uh, shows, uh, shows some performance evaluation. Uh, let's first see the left diagram. Uh, it shows the, the core distribution uh, from the VM and the IO processing part. We can see that uh, for, uh, for the VNs, we are allocated the same cores, so there will be no difference. Uh, but for the uh, cores to handle the IOs, it is quite different. You can see that if we use the cumulative IO, uh, it, will, it will be used about uh, uh, 10, CPU, 10, 10, 10 CPU cores. And uh, for SBK v host, we, we will just use one uh, CPU core. And the right diagram shows the uh, performance uh, comparison. It uh, shows that uh, during such uh, configuration in the left diagram, uh, SBK still, uh, SBK's performance is still much better than cumulative tile and the vhost kernel. Uh, if we calculate the, the per core uh, performance, I think that SDK vhost uh, will, will be much better. Maybe it is about uh, uh, 10x better than the existing uh, cumulative solution. And this page is about the, uh, the, the, the demo you can see during the SDC conference. The user case is the software accelerator virtual machine uh, storage. Uh, we will have the uh, Intel Xeon scalable processor, the latest uh, uh, processor in Intel's per platform. We will deploy uh, 48 virtual machines uh, on a 24 a direct attached to Intel Optin and many SSDs. And uh, each SSDs will be partitioned uh, into two parts and uh, serve two virtual, uh, two virtual machines. And uh, this page uh, shows the uh, performance uh, of the 48 virtual machines. We compare the performance between vhost kernel and the vhost uh, SDK. Uh, we can see that uh, during the three uh, type of cases, for example, the 4K, 4K uh, read, uh, write, and the 4K 70% read, and 30% uh, write, we, we all again perform, we all about uh, the average performance gain is about uh, uh, 3.2, 2 x better. And for the details, uh, I think you can see uh, the Intel's, uh, Intel's booth uh, around the, uh, the meeting rooms. So this is all my part. The next part will be my colleague's Lohmann's part. It is about the VTUM for SPK.
sorry. So, my name is Roman, and I am technical lead at Intel Vitune Amplifier team. Now, what I'm going to talk to you about today is uh, how Vitune can help in performance debugging of SPDK. Um, just raise your hands how many people have heard of Intel Vitune at this point? How many of you have used uh, Vitune features to determine how efficiently your code is passing through the core pipeline? Cool, good to see hands. Okay, so what is Intel Vitune Amplifier? It's a performance profiling tool which can uh, help you analyze your code, uh, identify inefficient algorithms and software usage, and give you performance tuning advice. So what is performance debugging of SPDK? On a very high level, it consists of understanding of three things. Uh, CPU utilization, how application passes through the framework, and performance monitoring of physical interfaces, since sometimes applications could be stalled due to approaching bandwidth limits of any physical link. So let's start from CPU utilization. I don't want to say things that people already know, just mention that SPDK operates in polling mode. What that means is that CPU is running high all the time. The thing here is that modern CPUs are still so much faster, even than all those fancy new NVMe drives. But CPU cycles are precious, and it's always good to have kind of justification of that high CPU load. And that's not the whole story. SPDK also bypasses kernel block stack. And what that means is that we lose access to all those nice and handy tools like IOSTAR, Blockstat, and others which calculates IO performance metrics like IOPS, throughput, and so on. So debugging SPDK in terms of IO <laughs> may become a real challenge, mostly because of standard tools are IO inapplicable, as in case of uh, IO performance metrics. Or just give a trivial answer, as in case of CPU utilization. And this is where Vitune can help. Vitune covers all the tooling gaps and can give you a complete picture of your performance. And on the next slide, I'll show supported usage models. Uh -huh. So this is a quick slide announcing SPDT usage model models, which are already supported in Intel Vitune. I fully expect many use cases with different Safari configurations to appear over time. So if you have any, uh, which, and you would like to have profiling capabilities there, so I would love to hear about that. And one more thing which is worth to mention at this point, um, there is a special option in return to specify what you want to profile. It's analysis target. So it could be either executable process or the whole system. So Vitune can either launch your application or attach to the already running process or just profile whole system. Now let's take a look how it how it shows it. So this is summary window. It's uh, overall performance data of your target. And you can use it as a starting point of your application. Uh, report consists of five sections uh, representing application and system level statistics. I will briefly walk through all of them and then focus on the SPDK specific. So first one is CPU metrics. Uh, it consists of almost 150 various metrics, which helps estimate overall application execution. Next, SPDK info and SPDK throughput represents performance data collected from the framework uh, layer. Uh, bandwidth utilization histogram shows how much time uh, system bandwidth was utilized by a certain value. And the last one, collection and total info. Here you can find information about target application, operating system, CPU type, and so on. So let's get back to SPDK info section and take a closer look. So uh, here you can find overall IO performance data and SPDK effective time metric, which I will uh, describe a bit later. So technically it shows uh, amount of bytes read and written from the storage device and amount of IO operations, which uh, with a breakdown per access type. So we can expand each section and see how each device performs individually. And, uh, and as the initial takeaway here, we can notice that there is some utilization imbalance here, and if it's not what is expected, then definitely there is something to do here. Now let's take a look at the SPDK effective time. So that metric represents 
polling efficiency. Uh, this is uh, technically it's fraction of cycles when CPU falls into the polling loop and actually found any completions. So what we can learn here? Consider case if uh, Vtune identifies relatively good uh, SPDK effective time. Uh, does it mean we are done? The answer is maybe. It all depends on IO performance. If it's okay, then yes, we are done. But if not, then we probably overload the core with devices and it's better to bring more, device, more core to SPDK and rebalance the application. Another common case is if Vtune identifies relatively good IO performance. And same question is here. But answer is still maybe, since now it all depends on effective time. And if it's low, when we definitely have potential to get even more performance from that core, just bring more devices here and we'll get more performance. Now let's take a look at the SPDK for put section. Uh -huh. That section represents performance data as a throughput utilization histogram. That histogram uh, introduces threshold to categorize throughput as low, medium, and high, so you can set up reasonable performance targets and see how and see SPDK activity by throughput utilization level. Now we can switch to the bottom-up view and see where application performance is limited. Uh -huh. So bottom-up view is designed to provide performance picture at a glance. It consists of three blocks, thread, IO statistic, and PCI bandwidth. And let's take a look at them separately. So first one is thread. Thread uh, presents a list of threads which was running at the system file collection. That dark brown filling in the background represents uh, CPU utilization, and it's nearly 100% as expected. And that light brown filling in the foreground represents SPDK effective time. And what we can learn here is that approximately half of CPU cycles was really used by that workload on that particular system to move data. Next is uh, next section is IO statistic. It consists of standard uh, IO for put and IOPS. We can just bring back what was missed due to bypassing kernel block layer. Uh, performance data is given per device, and also it can be seen per read and write, and also total. And in the bottom there is a PCI bandwidth. And uh, this is where I would like to draw your attention. It's a new feature uh, which is available starting Xeon V5, known as a Skylake server. On that platform, we can monitor PCI data not on the per package basis, but per device. And here uh, I have two socket system and four locally attached device. Three of them are attached to socket uh, one, and one device is attached to socket zero. All of them are identified by Vtune, models are identified, and also we can see traffic correlating pretty good with the data collected at the framework layer and data collected from the PMU, from the Encore. Oh, some magic here. Okay, so, and every time good question comes, what next? So we can start from the basic idea to switch back to the thread block, and since it's colored by the uh, throughput layers, which we choose on the summary page. And we can see, for example, and locate uh, recessions and see how, how low throughput is really low. And for example, in that moment, we can figure out that it's not just low, it's even dropped for approximately 160 milliseconds. And next obvious case is to figure out which function uh, were ex executed at, at that moment, prior that moment, and next, and try to do some corrections. So, I think that's it for the main talk. Uh, any questions so far? The uh, two part one part. Yeah. The that? Yes, directly from Ancore. Are those and they're in the complex IP of the processor? They're in the processor. Yes, each 
Each one is. So if you have a switch in your system, it's not necessarily true. It's, it's applicable for a server platform. Yes, sure. Any more questions? So, Z, Paul, who's going to take summary? <laughs> uh, it's most few parts, actually. <laughs> anyway. I, I do, but... <laughs> Drive it home, baby. Uh, so we do great and big job here. <laughs> uh, let me read. <laughs> so you can read also. And ask me any question. Sorry? It's a question to you, right? Definitely, even if I have a mic. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on a sec. Okay, uh, so the question was, what are we doing next with SPDK? Um, we're doing all, just all sorts of cool shit with SPDK. Um, <laughs> I mean, what you saw today, there's still a, a lot of room for improvement and growth. Um, around uh, all of our fabric implementations for NVMOF, um, both the initiator side and the target side. Um, we're doing a lot with Blob Store, which I'll be talking about Wednesday. Um, and, and for those of you that aren't familiar with it at all, it's, it's, um, it's kind of an object storage-y sort of thingy, Mabob, that um, we call it just a block allocator. Um, but we're putting some more modules on top of that and really able to present blobs basically as devices. So it's a, essentially an LVM type implementation. Um, so we're kind of taking all of the useful things that you see in different user storage stacks or different kernel storage stacks and, and making kind of the user space version of them, um, in addition to continuing to harden and, and do performance improvements uh, across all these different things. Yes? I haven't heard any discussions, um, but it, it's, it's possible. Um, the, the way most of those kind of things go, uh, it, as, as we become more of a worldwide community and less of an Intel-driven focused thing, um, we really rely on what you go out and see on Trello, like I mentioned earlier, um, to get an idea of what people are interested in, where the community wants to take the project, um, or you jump on IRC and, and see what people are talking about. So when we talk about future features, it's no longer the case that it's what Intel wants to do. It's the case of what people are doing in the community and where they're taking it. Um, we at, at Intel are still, you know, the major contributors, and we're continuing to drive uh, the things that we hear about and the things that are already on that block diagram we showed earlier. Um, but really, anything goes in the future. It's what what people have interest in and are willing to, to resource. You know, quite honestly. Good question, though. Another one. On the on the target side. Protocol side. Um, no, I haven't heard a whole lot of interest there uh, uh, outside of that either. There, there's, there's a lot of work on the iSCSI side for us to do still, and that's, uh, we're expecting that to be a big topic at our developer meetup in November. Um, we've had a lot of feedback on uh, new features that people would like to see. Um, and, and again, we're trying to encourage more people to contribute features as opposed to request features. <laughs> so, uh, so there's still a lot of work even on the iSCSI side, but I haven't heard too much about um, new protocols that people want to work on, other than you know the, the NVMe. Yeah, what about if, uh, turning it into a, a library? Where you guys that? Did you just ask that question on the mailing list? <laughs> 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 it just came up two days ago. Um, yeah, and and there's a, there's a bunch of different viewpoints on on how that works. Some people are sort of using it as a library today. You don't build it as a shared library, uh, and uh, in fact. Um, Daniel, who's one of the maintainers, had a really good answer for it in an email that I wish I could just recite. <laughs> um, but, um, you know, essentially a lot of the components in SPDK are at differing levels of maturity, right? Some of them, like the NVMe driver, have been around for quite a while um, and is pretty mature. Um, the API has stabilized. Um, other ones, like Blob Store, the API is still developing. Um, and uh, it, it's difficult in some of those cases to really lock them down and say, all right, let's, let's build this as a shared library and use it that way. 
Um, so right now it kind of varies per module, so there isn't really any, you know, grandiose plan to, to build anything that way. Yeah, nothing in the near future. But again, it's it's a completely open project. If somebody came in and wanted to take like the NVMe module, for example, and, and, and build it that way, then certainly not, nobody would stop them. Okay, anything else? Sure, we got all night. We're the last talk. <laughs> Um, and, and again, that's, that's going to sort of depend on, on how we gauge the interest in the community. Um, we have some interest uh, at Intel in looking into that, um, and we're looking at some different, some different open source options right now for the, uh, the TCPIP portion. Um, but um, I haven't heard a whole lot of rumblings on that either. Um, and, and again, we're looking forward to our developer meetup in November. That's that and the, and the iSCSI work um, and uh, some of the vHost work are, we're expecting to be hot topics for discussion where we'll gauge interest and see who wants to participate and contribute what. And um, there's a lot of investigation in some of these areas. So, but but yeah, that's up there. Yeah, you know I. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not super familiar with that either. So that's something we could uh, we could follow up on offline with the DBDA folks. Yep. Well, you know that. So th so there was some history there. I don't think that's on these slides, but I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah. It was. History, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I know that uh, previously uh, we, we have LibUNES inside SDK. It is only for the NDA customers. But uh, finally, I mean that LibUNES in SDK is abandoned by Intel. The reason is that uh, it says that the DBDK team will be responsible for the uh, user space TCP IP uh, stack development. So, so, so LibUNES is just uh, stopped Maybe current uh, a temporary stop in SPDK, but uh, we we don't know the <laughs> whether that will be happening in the future. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah, LibUNS is what was experimentally used for a little while, but it didn't make it in to SPDK with uh, with any of the same license. So if you find it on any of the old materials or anything, that's basically old news. We we don't have a user space TCP/IP stack for SPDK right now. Be nice if we did, but we don't. <laughs> okay, I think the bar is open if that's the last question. No, Stephen's chomping at the bit. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. <laughs>